The Kemp's Ridley is the rarest sea turtle in the world. The public is critical for us to be able to document those sea turtles that do nest. Most people do not have a feel for sea turtles, the plights that they uh, are facing, and where you might uh, basically encounter them, and what you do when you encounter them. It's our job to, to give them the information, to let them know what's going on, and to let them know how they can help. Certainly, we see the Kemp's Ridley as being the Gulf of Mexico turtle. Uh, this turtle for many, many um, hundreds of years probably nested in great abundance uh, at its main nesting ground, Rancho Nuevo, Mexico, about 180 miles south of Brownsville, and may have used other portions of the western Gulf as nesting and as foraging and breeding grounds. Sea turtles uh, have been around for uh, uh, eons and eons, uh, millions and millions of years. Sea turtles decline for a variety of reasons. Um, all of them are human or human-related activities. It's a long story and a long history. Uh, sea turtles in the 1800s were harvested, much like whales were harvested. And they were uh, canned and sold as meat. The killing of turtles for meat, the killing of turtles for leather, for curios, things like that, led to the demise of the nesting stock. And then secondly, the incidental capture of sea turtles in uh, commercial fisheries, primarily the, the, the shrimp fishery. And sea turtles are air breathers, basically held underwater in a net, has basically brought about uh, the death of a considerable number of turtles, Kemp's Ridley's included. The good news is we are seeing more and more Kemp's Ridley's in the Gulf of Mexico, in both Mexico and in Texas. Uh, the low point was 702 nests worldwide in 1985. But if you go back to historical data that we have, go back to 1947, we've got video of 10 to 40,000 females nesting on a single beach in Mexico on a single day. If we begin to lose these species that have been here longer than the dinosaurs and have been a model of resilience and we begin to throw their fate to the winds, are they going to be the first of a long line of animals, critters, plants that uh, we just basically lose uh, a value of. Well, the sea turtles are recovering. Uh, and they're recovering with a lot of effort uh, from a lot of different agencies, including Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Marine Fisheries Service and the uh, Hart Foundation, uh, which is a, a non-governmental organization, and lots of public interest as well. This organization, Hart, is the brainchild of a very imaginative Texan lady called Carol Allen, who started it 20 years ago or more. You've got to convince the people. You've got to tell them what they're doing. And you've got to convince them that this is worth doing and is worthy of their support. Kemp's really nests on the Texas coast are found in two ways. One is because of reports from the public, which are vital to us and the others from beach patrols, actually going out and systematically searching for the nesting turtles or the tracks that they leave in the sand during daylight hours. There are many groups along the Texas coast that are working very hard on these beach patrols. Really, the big danger is uh, the failure to educate the public. Because basically, we are taking advantage of some great things that are happening in sea turtle 
uh, communities, at least along the Texas and the Western Gulf Coast. And that is the increased number and the in increased occurrence of sea turtles. These are four Kemp's Ridley hatchlings that uh, hatch from a nest that went undetected in front of the San Luis Hotel, right in front of the seawall in Galveston. The mother nesting went undetected, and it wasn't until the hatchlings were actually emerging from the sand, and people were on the beach and saw these turtles coming up out of the ground, uh, they called us. We would not even have known this nest existed if, if the public had not called the 1-866-TURTLE-5 a number and reported this. Without educating the public, if they had not known to call, we would have never seen these turtles. We would have never been able to save them from the nest. They probably would have got run over with the next load of beach umbrellas that was taken off the beach, if not trampled by the beachgoers or eaten by dogs. When we talk about stewardship of living marine resources, that means stewardship of all the living animals in the ecosystem. And we're talking about the ecosystem in the Gulf of Mexico, the marine ecosystem. And sea turtles are part of that ecosystem. And to have one species that seems to be pulling itself back from the brink of extinction is not only heartening, but it's very encouraging. If we continue to educate the public about the value of these endangered species and, and ways through education, proper management, proper conservation, we're going to see numbers of sea turtles increase. Sea turtles are a national natural resource. Uh, sea turtles belong to everybody here in the United States. They actually belong to the world.